Okay, uh, this is Jason Peck, KD0EKT, and I'm here um, at the request of a fellow ham to show you a short video of the Lil Squall 2 kit. Um, this is a QRP, uh, QRP CW transceiver, Morse code for those of you non-hams or yet-to-be hams. Um, that I got from qrpme.com and Rex is a guy that runs that site he's a nice guy he's got some good products there and um, this is one of them I didn't have any real reason for picking this one other than it uh, the main thing the main reason I like this one I guess is because it came with everything and by everything I don't mean really everything but everything that you're gonna need if you're an active ham and you've got things like a key you know, and cables for your key, and a 9-volt battery, and some extra, you know, RCA jacks, and little connectors and stuff like that laying around. You'll find everything else you need with this kit. So, it comes with a can, and it's really cool when you first get it, because it's actually got a little pull top, pull top tab, and you peel that back, and he's got all the components in there, just waiting for you to uh, put them together. Uh, the other thing that I highly recommend is print out the instructions. Print them out, read all the way through them, do everything he says to do, uh, but I will tell you there are uh, there are some little discrepancies in the instructions. What he has you do is put the components into five different Ziploc baggies and number them, and then that way you can do an inventory check and divide your build up into five stages. What you'll find is a couple of components end up going in different bags. You'll have a few things left over. It's not the end of the world. If you just pay attention to what you're doing, you'll figure it out. Um, so when you're done with this, um, what you end up with is, I don't know if I'll be able to get this screw off here. Let's take it from the bottom. What you'll end up with is a, well, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that and hold the camera at the same time. This is just a hollow can, and see there's a screw in the bottom. So you don't have any wires or anything like that underneath there in the can itself. It's just there as a as an enclosure, basically, to hold your PCB, your printed circuit board here. When you're all done, um, and it's just held in by the one screw there. Anyway, what you have is, and I'm going to use my laser pen here for, oh, well, that's interesting. I'll use that to point. <laughs> What you have is, it's crystal controlled, so here's your crystal, and I've got a 7.114 megahertz crystal in there now. Interestingly enough, it transmits at about 7.112.4. I don't know if that's because I screwed something up. I mean, I double-checked all my capacitor values, and they're all correct. And I've metered everything. You know, I've tested this thing a million different ways, and it always comes out to about 7.112. Dot four. That's the only crystal I've tried. I've got other crystals laying around. Um, but you, you can see that you've got an SIP socket right here for your tank circuit parts. The capacitor, I mean the, uh, oh yeah, the capacitors and the crystal both are, you can just pull them out. They're not soldered in. There's actually a couple of those because you got one there too. And then, so that's your oscillator circuit there. Um, let's see if I can get my laser pen working right in here. That'll be the first thing you build your oscillator circuit. Um, <clears throat> next is the, well, I don't know what the next thing was. I think the keying circuit. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and go through the papers. I'll just point the components out. Next, you got your LM386 chip right here, which is an amplifier chip. Pretty common, most of the kits. There's a couple capacitors, electrolytic capacitors there that go with that. You can see there. Um, and then you got your final right here. The final transistor is that big, that big can right there. Um, resistors, capacitors. It's got three transistors on it. <clears throat> uh, right there, there, and then there. Yeah. One of them is a... Well, it's four if you count the final. So, anyway. One's a feedback switch for your tank circuit, your oscillator. Another one is the... 
one of them's a mixer final. Well, no, I guess that'd be the mixer final. Um, and then I think you got a uh, these two. Actually, I'm not entirely sure what they do. Maybe somebody that is looking at the schematic and knows more about that than I do could tell you. Um, so, but the important things there that everybody's probably really wondering about is what the various jacks are, what the connectors are that you're going to need to make them work, and we'll just go one at a time here. You have right here the key jack. It's a three and a half millimeter stereo jack. You have well, there's your low pass filter. Then you have on this side the uh, the power, the antenna, I should say the antenna is on the right, the right yellow one is the antenna, then you have the power, and then you have your headphones. So one thing that you will need to do is go to Rat Shack and get a RCA adapter like this right here and screw a couple of wires into it um, and get some of these 9 volt, you know, these 9 volt uh, connectors as well. I happen to have some RCA cables laying around, and it was probably a little more expensive this way, but I've got them laying around. So I just cut it and splice that together, and then that's my power right there. So you got that, and then the other thing, you'll need, you'll need to do the same thing for your antenna, and then on the other side of your antenna, you'll need one of these things. The kit does not come with it. You'll need to order one. They're only like two bucks, two or three bucks, something like that. And it is a RCA to uh, PL259 or uh, SO239 connector. I can never remember which one's which. Somebody told me a way to, to remember that, and I still get them mixed up. Anyway, uh, you'll need that adapter. One piece right there. So that'll go to your, obviously out to your antenna. That goes into the rig. Um, and then the only other thing that you'll need is a straight key or a cootie or a bug or something, some kind of mechanical key. One of the tricks that I learned a while back is I just have one cord. This, this cord is a stereo connector cord that I use for all of my keys. It doesn't matter if it's an electronic key, you know, like an iambic paddle, or if it's a bug or what it is, it doesn't make any difference. For an iambic paddle, I've just got this one marked as the dot this is ground and then this one is dash but with a straight key you don't need that one for anything so I always just have this side plugged into the rig and then when I want to switch out keys I just take my alligator clips off and switch them out so anyway that's um, pretty much it you can swap out the low pass filter that's that, uh, has a pin connector that goes down into the sockets. So like if you want to convert this over to a different band, then you would change out this. You change out your probably your caps and your crystal for the tank circuit, I'm guessing. I haven't actually looked, I'm just guessing. Kind of common sense will tell you those that have to change out. But I think that's probably about it. All the rest of it should work just fine. The kit's like forty bucks. There's an address there, QRP me, Limerick, Maine. The label kind of comes off there, but it does come with everything you need, like I said, except for your, you know, you'll need that adapter, and then you'll need, obviously, straight key cable, and 9-volt battery, and, and that other thing. But other than that, it comes, like I said, everything you need. Um, it's got some mods, so you can kind of experiment with it. Um, different parts that I haven't even put on here yet. But it's a basic rig. I mean, you'll when you plug it in, and it'll run on 9 to 12 volts. So, you know, a 9-volt battery is probably the bottom range. I've got, this one's actually less than 9 volts under a load. It's a little bit on the dead side. But when you plug it in, you don't really hear the noise like you'd hear on an expensive rig. You just hear a little bit of hiss. But if you listen really, really carefully, you'll hear code kind of probably all over the place because it's a pretty simple rig. It's not like it's got filters and you know all that stuff built into it. So you're going to hear you're going to hear a lot of different signals at once, and they're really faint. You got to listen for them, but you'll hear them if you put everything together right. 
I did not hear anything at first because Q3, the Q3 transistor, um, this one right here was toast. It took me a while to figure that out. I just wanted to desolder that thing and switch it out. I had to go up to Rat Shack and get another one. Um, but everything else worked. So uh, I didn't hear anything at first, but then when I got that thing switched out, it worked just fine. So um, then when, it, when you key down, um, you'll just hear clicks. I mean, it shuts off the receive circuit, so you won't hear the hiss anymore. But you'll just hear a click. And I just I have another rig. I got rigs laying all over the place around here that I just tune to so I can hear a side tone and I know it's working. And it does work. I haven't made a contact with it yet though, other than just with myself. So anyway, that is the Little Squall 2 by QRP Me. Good fun rig. Um, I don't know that I'd want it to be my only rig, but if you want to build a kit, I definitely recommend this one. I've tried to build a couple others without any success. Just because I'm not real good at, at uh, hacking things together and coming up with miscellaneous parts and they all seem to need them. So, anyway, order one. Have fun. 40 bucks. Can't go too far wrong. That's all for now. Have a good one.